So when we say I am a front end engineer, usually what comes to the person's mind is, well, you work with either the web, so you write JavaScript code, CSS, uh, HTML, you know, or use a framework like React or Angular. And then, uh, or that could be a different kind of front end where you build desktop applications. Yes, those things still exist, guys. We used to build desktop applications in the in the, in the mid 2000s, still do. <laughs> a lot of people build that. So yeah, technically your desktop application builder is a front end engineer. And uh, that's what comes to mind when we say a front end engineer, because a front end implies there is a back end to consume, all right? And when I say I am a back end engineer, usually I build the infrastructure, uh, whether this is a web server, whether this is a API framework, whether this is a proxies, uh, whether this is even a databases, right? And there's someone, usually a front end, consuming the back end because, right? Backend cannot be called backend if it, nobody consumes it. Well, you can argue with that. But I'm here to tell you that your backend is a front end for someone else. Almost all the time. How about we discuss that? So let's define what a front end and what a back end is. A front end is usually usually is also referred to as the client that consumes some sort of an API or some sort of an endpoint. And usually, don't have to, but usually this is through a networking uh, interface, right? This is through the network. And uh, when you say network, that means you have to use some sort of a protocol like HTTP or uh, if you're fancy, you use gRPC. Right, and then you do go into the messaging formats and all the stuff because just you just separated, you separated the entities from each other, and there is a network between them. But in my opinion, you can disagree with that. Even a library that is built with exposed APIs and you literally reference this library in your code and you consume it to the library, you are a client or a front end that you consume that stuff, right? Doesn't have to be through a network, does it? Well, this is the, this is the, this is the norm. We usually call the front end and back end. There's some, some sort of a separation between them. But I don't think it does have to be. So yeah, that's the idea, right? That's the front end. The back end implies that, well, I build a set of APIs, I build a set of functions, I build a set of functionality, and some client is consuming this back end, this, uh, this thing that I built, right? And, and that's very similar, right? whether this is through a protocol, HTTP or HTTP2 or gRPC or any protocol that is, right, through the network or similar thing, library and a client, right? A client and server, you can't say that. However, if you th really think about it, the front end and the back end is kind of contextual. It depends where who are you first and where are you in the stack because everything has a front end and a back end. And let's take an example of thinking about that. I was like thinking uh, tweeting that the other day. I was like, you know, I'm going to make a video talking about that because uh, I talk about weird stuff in this channel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So I have here a front end. Let's, for, say, for sake of uh, inclusivity, let's say browser, app, web app, HTML, JavaScript, right? And there is my back end. So this is the client. And this is the, uh, the web server that hosts the API, some API endpoints. REST, for example, and this is consuming 
a database and this is the database right so there is a, a bunch of connection pools tcp connections that the rest api calls the database to okay and behind the web server there is a beautiful reverse proxy that acts like a load balancer and because i have many of those so technically let's let's go through this again so i have a browser yeah i don't know how to use animation sue me guys all right i'll learn i'll learn <laughs> this is the reverse proxy this is my backend applications and this is my beautiful database right so four four things so this application the javascript application is the front end right but front end to who to the reverse proxy right because it makes the request to the reverse proxy so the front end application the javascript the reverse proxy is its back end right it says hey i'm making a call to the back end and that's what it knows that's the only thing that it knows the reverse proxy okay hmm however the reverse proxy cannot just serve the front end because it doesn't know better it needs itself to make a call to the back end to its back end which is what which is the back end application the web servers the express node.js django -y stuff that's a new application by the way <laughs> all right so now the reverse proxy will act as a front end and will make the request on behalf of the client but to the back end application that you wrote here the, the, to django web server this is your front end hmm that's very interesting right this is not a front end this is the front this is the direct front end nobody's connecting to you from outside so you have a finite set of and maybe this, these are keep alive, right? Active, active kind of uh, scenario where you have a DNS uh, load balancing them, right? No, it, there might be multiple load balancing. And then it's just like, yeah, this now is the front end connecting to the back end, right? And then boop, 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 that's the back end. Fascinating. Let's move there. I received your REST call. But guess what? That REST API that we built is useless because I need to communicate with a back-end database to actually make a query to select star from whatever don't do select star bad bad right select the specific thing we need and uh, they are index and stuff so this is the my back-end application and making a call to the database beautiful isn't it so my Django app is a front end to the database. Mind blown. Not really. But yeah, it will make a call to the database. And probably these, these are already established channels and connections between an, uh, the, uh, the, the web framework and the database because and here where people become really you become a really back good back -end engineer a back -end engineer to me is anything here <laughs> to be honest right and if any anything here here is, is back -end engineer to just to me right and you can you can know how expensive these things are and, and optimize preheat these things preheat these connections spin them up when the application starts and keep them warm right so we so we can spin up the, the quest very quickly and yeah so this is a front end and this guy the database is the back end and if you want to be a little nitpicking the database i'm gonna move it a little bit here because uh, i don't have space i'm not funny i know the database here and this is now the back server this is the reverse proxy of this the front end is dead uh, it's fallen down the ocean now my database especially if you're using something like uh, my sequel right uh, itself 
hooks to the disk. So this is an application. The database is nothing but an application, right? But it needs to write to the disk, right? Or read from the disk. And it uses a specific library called the database engine, right? And this database engine is smart enough to deal with certain configuration, right? Uh, things like my ISAM, AnnoDB, my rocks, RocksDB, things like that. How 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 the table is physically stored in disk, index, disk is responsible to the database engine. Usually these are clumped together. In case of Postgres, for example, the Postgres application and the database engine is the one thing. But MySQL and MariaDB and, 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 and Persona, they split them, which I love. A little bit expensive and, and it slows your development down, but I love it nevertheless because you can swizzle the database engine to change it. Hey, uh, my workload is write heavy. Use RocksDB. My workload is slow. Um, I mean, my, my readers are, are, are more than my writes, so I'm going to use AnnoDB and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is how it's stored in disk. So the database now is a front end. I'm sorry about that. It's a front end that talks to the uh, to the to the disk, all right. I was supposed to be French. To the disk and the disk, not necessarily the disk. The disk is just a resource, right? The database engine is the back end, right? That talks about that, and, and that's if you if you a little bit know about Kubernetes and 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 posts like that. This is how they are architected with their storage, with their storage containers and stuff like that, right? Uh, there is a blob store. There is the database itself is a front end that literally calls the database engine, which is S3 or, or whatever. I'm not an expert in, in Kubernetes, but I, I know there is the storage mechanism that they are separated. So it becomes as if the database itself is just an application and you can just destroy it and spin it up somewhere else, right? And, and, and that's how the database becomes a front end, talks to a, a disk controller or storage controller, I forgot what they call it in Kubernetes, just to make databases stateless, right? Because it's hard. How do you make something that's stateful, designed to be have a state, stateless, right? You separate concern. So yeah, it's very, very interesting, these, what is a front end, what is a back end? So even the front end thing, so, so, Technically, if you think about it, guys, all of us are front-end engineers, and all of us are back-end engineers. You have an API that someone else consumed, and you are a back-end. You must be a client consuming some other library or, 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 or function or API. You're a front-end. It's very interesting. So whether you're here, whether you're all the way here, we're all front-end engineers. We're all back-end engineers. I'm going to see you in the next one, guys. Uh, what should I talk about next? Uh, stay tuned for Friday's video. Uh, why sharking MongoDB? Yeah, I talk... Uh, so if you're new here, guys, by the way, I talk about back-end engineering. That's my specialty. Talk about reverse proxies. Talk about proxies. Talk about Nginx. J proxy. Anything in the back-end. That's pretty interesting. Uh, recently, I developed um, security... Uh, love for security so you're gonna start popping some security video and this vid this channel is my journey you, you're gonna see whatever I learn I talk about right don't claim to be an expert and I don't think anyone is we're all learning all right guys gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome